Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the BGM-71 Tube Launch Optically Tracked Wire Guided Missile System. Please remember to like and subscribe. Alright, Fact 1, Wireless Variant in 2004. The tow missile, the W stands for Wire Guided, meaning that this missile originally developed over 50 years ago now was wire guided. When the operator fires the rocket, there's a super long wire that spools out, staying connected to the missile so that the operator can control where it goes using the optical sensors. The optical guidance is an important part, which is the O part of the tow missile. But as you can see, this is not really useful in the battlefield because you need to be fairly close to your enemy. And the wires are more of a old way of doing things. And as a result, since 2004, Raytheon, the company that develops this missile system, created a wireless version. The wireless version uses radio frequencies to control the rocket as it propels toward the enemy. Eliminating the wire is a significant step because now the operator doesn't need to be so close to the enemy target and don't need to deal with some super long wire in the process. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 2. Vehicle Mount. As you can see, this system is quite large. It's definitely not something super mobile and it takes a bit of a setup because it needs to be mounted on a tripod if there is no vehicles. And as a result, most of the times when you see operators using this, it's mounted on a truck or other type of armor vehicles. It makes more sense to do it this way because this system is fairly immobile. It has a large optical stand, again to guide the missile, and the tube itself is rather large. You definitely can't have some guy carrying this into the battlefield and also carry it out. It would just be too much effort and on top of all the equipment they have to carry. And as a result, most of these are mounted on armored vehicles such as these striker vehicles that you see. Striker vehicles are a great mount platform for the BGM-71 tow missiles. And so you see them on top of a striker armor vehicle fairly common. It makes more sense to deploy this on an easily movable truck or vehicle so that the soldier themselves don't need to be burdened with dragging this thing in and out of the battlefield. All right, fact three. Roll-Y Operators As I mentioned in the previous sections, this missile system has been in use since the 1970s. That's over 50 years ago now. At the time of this video, a 50-year-old system is still proving effective today and has been disseminated worldwide as you can see on this map. And many different countries and nations have adopted the BGM-71 to their particular vehicles or their soldier battlefield operations in order to take out enemy tanks. Because of its longevity, ever since the Vietnam War which was the first introduction of this, it has been used in so many different conflicts. It has been used in the Lebanon War, the Iran-Iraq War, Persian Gulf War, even in Somalia when the United States tried to overthrow Farah Hadid. The war in Afghanistan, the Iraq War, the Syrian Civil War, all these conflicts saw the use of this missile system. Alright, Fact 4. Reverse Engineer by Iran During the Iraq-Iran conflict, the United States supplied Iraq with these type of missile systems. And so when the Iranians captured them back in the 1970s, the Iranian military engineers were able to completely reverse engineering this from their captured units. And as a result, they created the Tofan or Typhoon in the Iranian military. And it's almost identical to the BGM-71 tow missile system. It looks almost the same, but it uses a different type of warhead and different type of missile underneath. I think it makes sense because they probably were only able to capture the optical and launch platform but not necessarily the missile because the Iraqi military must have fired it. But the Iranians are known for their military 
technologies and was able to develop their own type of anti-tank missile system solely based on the BGM-71. It's incredible that they're able to do this and continue to manufacture their own versions in their domestic defense contractor industry and continue to compete with the United States versions. Alright, let's get into the next and final fact, Bunker Buster Variant. As I mentioned in the previous sections, the BGM-71 is really an anti-tank missile system designed to take out armored vehicles and tanks in the battlefield. However, the United States military, building on the success of this system, developed a new platform that can use the same launcher but different type of missile for a Bunker Buster variant. The Bunker Buster is the BGM-71H and it's designed to use against fortified structures. It could penetrate up to 200 millimeters of double reinforced concrete. And so if you think about it, when the Bunker Buster is mounted on a striker or other armor type vehicle applications, or even a Humvee as you can see, you effectively make it become a tank. Because now, the missile system can penetrate a 4 to 5 enemy position in a bunker, similar to what a tank does in its main battle gun. So I think it's pretty incredible that they're able to leverage this existing system, use the existing technologies, and simply adapt it to better uses. Again, when you do this, it saves you so much time on research and development, because you essentially have the entire launch platform optical sensors, and using the wireless variant, you have a real quick to production and deployment bunker buster system ready to use in the battlefield. Alright, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.